remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Back with you once again, and uh, this is going to be kind of a unique program because I have an announcement today that I need to make to all of you folks who, who watch this show and follow it so closely, and and I just don't know how you're going to react to this announcement that I'm going to make. And I, I'm you know I'm kind of nervous about it, um, but it's something that's been been deep down in my heart, deep down in my gut, and I just feel like I got to get it out there and I got to say it publicly. I got to have it out there for everybody to know it. And, and let the chips fall where they may. It's something I've been keeping deep inside of me for a long time. And I, I just, it's really bothered me that I don't feel I can come out here and say this to the public. But by God, I'm going to do it today. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to announce that I, Travis Cook, have made a lifestyle choice. And I am a red heterosexual. That's right. I am a red heterosexual. Now, upon hearing that, I know some of you out there right now are 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 not, are thinking a little bit less of me. I know others of you don't really understand what being a red heterosexual means. Well, I'll get to that first group in a second. For, but for those of you who don't understand what a red heterosexual is, let me explain. A red heterosexual is a heterosexual male who prefers the company of redheaded women over the company of blonde women or brunette women or whatever other hair color. Okay, that's the lifestyle choice I've made. I prefer redheaded women over other women. Now, I know some of you are going to think a little bit less of me for that. You don't think it's right that I prefer only redheaded women and other women, ah, uh, not so much. You you think that's wrong, and, and you're going to criticize me for that. But I got, I got news for you. Those of you who would criticize my lifestyle choice, those of you who would criticize my red heterosexuality, you all are just haters. You're bigots. You're bigots. That's what you are. And you need to come out of the Stone Age, and you need to be dragged into 2013 or the rest of us. You need to accept my red heterosexuality. No, 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 no. No, you don't need to accept it. You don't, you don't need to tolerate it. No, you need to appreciate my red heterosexuality. You need to be forced to appreciate my red heterosexuality. Did you know, did you know that some of the biggest contributors to the American tapestry have been red heterosexuals? Oh, yes, Desi Arnaz, married to Lucille Ball. Definitely a redhead. Well, Desi Arnaz, great band leader, TV producer, TV star, pioneer in the television industry. He was a red heterosexual. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Keith Urban, country and western star, married to Nicole Kidman. Definitely a red heterosexual. And Keith Urban has provided countless of hours of entertainment to the American people, written lots of great songs and albums and so forth, and he too is a red heterosexual. By golly, we need to shove this red heterosexual lifestyle down your throat and beat you in the head with it until you appreciate it and you appreciate us for who we are. You know what we need? We need a red heterosexual pride month. We need a red heterosexual pride parade somewhere. We have a bunch of red-headed women marching in the front of the parade, and then behind is a bunch of us red heterosexual males chasing after them. I could totally go for that. That's what we need in this country. We need you people to not just accept, but appreciate the red heterosexual lifestyle. You must accept us for who we are. It's pretty courageous of me to say that, isn't it? It's pretty, dare I say it, it might even be heroic of me to say that. Because you never know. You never know how many other red heterosexual guys are out there that, that just don't feel like they can say this publicly. And, and maybe maybe they, they, they don't want to come out and say they're red heterosexual. But maybe by seeing me do it in public like this, they'll, they'll, they'll have a little courage and they'll do it themselves. That, yeah, that makes me a hero. I'm kind of proud of that. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the forefront. I suppose I'm the leader of the red heterosexual movement. Okay. Okay, I was being facetious. For those of you without a college education, that means I was being a smartass. That was all kind of a joke or kind of a uh, absurd way to illustrate a point. Well, the part about me liking redheads wasn't a joke. That's actually legit. But the, the, that's neither here nor there. The big point of this is that over the last week, we've seen some NBA player named Jason Collins make a public statement that he was gay. Uh, to an ESPN interview, and then uh, on the face of doing that, all of the media just tripped and fell all over themselves to talk about how courageous and heroic this Jason Collins character was. That this was a big moment for him to overcome so much discrimination to admit that he was gay. And it struck me that, wait a second, 
the world that these media types are describing with this uh, with this Jason Collins character, that's not the world I live in at all. Frankly, most people I talk to, and I hang in some pretty conservative circles, by the way, most people I talk to either didn't notice the story or they said, oh, he's gay, whatever. You see, what a lot of you people out there on the East Coast, the West Coast, a lot of you liberals don't understand, is that out here in flyover country, out here in real America, if you ever visited us, you would find that, okay, there's things we don't agree with, but by and large, as long as you don't make an issue of it, we don't think it's a big deal. As long as you contribute and live your life and, and don't make a spectacle of yourself, yeah, whatever. There's things we disagree with, but it's not a big deal. Unless you make it a big deal. Well, the media this week tried to make Jason Collins a big deal. In fact, at one point, they even tried to, to compare him to Jackie Robinson, the guy that broke the color barrier in baseball. And that, I thought, was the most ludicrous comparison you could make. I mean, Jackie Robinson was a guy who, by any measure, was a great baseball player. Had speed, he could hit the ball. He was a bona fide all-star at any level you want to any level you want to think about. And yeah, he was kept from playing ball for a long, long time because of his skin color. Is Jason Collins going through anything similar to that? Is he a great player who's being kept from from making a living playing basketball? No, he's in the NBA and he's playing basketball. And he's certainly not a great player. I mean, I've got his stats right here from last season. Um this Collins dude averages 1.1 points per game, 1.6 rebounds per game, 0.2 assists per game, and his field goal percentage is 31%. Dude, you're lucky to have a job in the NBA. I don't I don't care what your lifestyle is. You you can make love to goats for all I care. You are lucky to be there with numbers like that. But yet we're told this guy is overcoming so much. And that's where I've got a real problem with this. Because I, I, I suspect that a lot of this is being used by this Collins guy or maybe some people around him or whatever to kind of stretch his 15 minutes of fame a little bit, to kind of, kind of make a career for himself after basketball. Because you know what's going to happen now. With numbers like that, this guy is either not going to be renewed on a contract or going to be cut from a team or something. And you know when that happens, what's the media going to do? They're going to say, was Jason Collins forced out of the NBA because he was gay? And you know what's coming. He's totally set this up. Or maybe his agent has or someone around him has. But that's totally what's been set up here. Well, Jason Collins, I got news for you. 1.1 points per game, 0.2 assists per game, 31% field goal percentage. Dude, if and when you get cut, it's not because you're gay. It's because you suck. Okay, okay, that, that was a poor choice of words. I'm sorry. I, who am I kidding? It was a perfect choice of words. Total double entendre there. The bottom line is, this Collins character, if he wants to continue making a living in a, as a basketball player, he, he might want to learn how to put the freaking basketball in the hoop or prevent others from putting the freaking basketball in the hoop. He's not doing a particularly good job of that. But what I'm afraid of is this is a... Another example of what we see so much in society now. Somebody who wants to use the idea of discrimination or wants to use the idea of being disadvantaged as a crutch to make up for their own failure or their own lack of achievement. It's not just some gay people we see do this, but you know, sometimes you see certain people in the minority classes do this. Certainly not all minorities, but a few here and there that want to blame their lack of achievement in life on, on their race or on any number of other, or you sometimes, gender, you see it happen there, you see women sometimes claim that, well, there's a glass ceiling, that's why I couldn't, that's why I couldn't succeed, rather than taking responsibility for their own performance. And I think this Jason Collins character is a extreme case of that, if you will. But I go back to, ja to Jackie Robinson for just a second. You know what the most amazing thing is to me about the Jackie Robinson story? Was that, yes, he color broke the color barrier in baseball, but the color barrier in baseball was not broken because of some government law, was not broken because of some big movement, was not broken because of some high-minded ideal. The color barrier in baseball was broken because the Brooklyn Dodgers got sick and tired of missing out on the World Series. Because for all the years that there was a gentleman's agreement there in place to keep blacks out of baseball, as horrific as that was, there were always teams that didn't do as well as they would like. And, and it was up to those teams to say, wait, maybe this gentleman's agreement isn't working out so well for us. That's what Branch Rickey figured out. And he's like, hey, there's this great player named Jackie Robinson. 
And they're telling us we can't have him, but this gentleman's agreement isn't doing us any good. We ain't winning jack squat. So they bucked the trend. They went out and they got him. And guess what? They got to the World Series. They became a contending team after that. They won world titles after that. Moral of the story is this. No matter what disadvantage you think you have, no matter what you think society thinks of you and what some of them may actually think of you, if you can contribute, if you can perform, then somebody somewhere will find a place for you via competition. That's the best way to overcome bigotry or prejudice or whatever is by the free market, is by competition. That's how Jackie Robinson got into baseball. That's how the University of Alabama football team, Bear Bryant, that's how they integrated in the deep south of all places. They integrated because USC beat them one year with a black running back, and Bear Bryant said, hey, if I don't start recruiting blacks, I'm not going to win another national title again. So Bear Bryant did it in the face of a culture that didn't want him to. And what happened after that? Everybody else in the South, who Bryant was already beating the brains out of anyway, they followed suit because they knew there was no chance for them if Bryant started doing it. And what do you have today? Those football teams in the Southeastern Conference are the best college football teams in the nation. The SEC brings in more money than any other college football conference. You see, that's what happens. Bigotry can be overcome, but it is best overcome by competition, and yeah, it's best overcome by a little bit of greed. Oh, you liberals don't like to hear that, but you look at history, that's the best way to overcome it. Time and again, you'll see examples of it. So that's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius, a proud red heterosexual, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>